Armstrong and looking forward to a bumper 2021. So we await the start of our next race. This will be a Group 9 feature race for the helmet, the gold helmet that, um, the bell helmet that uh, Ben was describing. And so they're all racing for that, and it's a prestigious national title. This the U.S. Vintage National Championship, of course. And Tony Perella, amazingly, getting over 300 cars involved in this weekend's racing. That's no mean feat. And, of course, the crowd here as well. We are getting fans in, but they're all masked up, socially distanced, thankfully. So everybody filling in the protocol, which is good news. And the last two of the front cars going out, and there you see the back row, another group of cars. It's a big field, this. Some 32 cars involved in this Group 9. ranging from 1,600 to 1,000cc. But all single-seaters, all slicks and wings, all fairly modern era. Like I said, the oldest being, uh, I think, Nick Leonard's 1981 Rolt RT4 from Pipe Creek, Texas. That's an 81. We have an 88 Reynard Formula Continental from 2000. Kingwood, Texas, just outside Houston. And there's car number 50. That is John Taphorn in the Van Diemen USF 2000. And, of course, USF 2000 is still going strong here in the States. The ladder of US Pro 2000, then Indy Lights, still very much alive. And, of course, now with FIA Formula Regional and FIA Formula 4 Americas, now the commercial rights with Tony Perella, who runs this series, will be on the same card as these cars next year. And I'm excited personally to involve the youngsters who may just get the idea that they can not only race their own racing career, but might get a chance to race the odd historic. And we're seeing more and more youngsters do that now, Ben. Yeah, and uh, a lot of our drivers, you know, sometimes they come to the track with two or three cars or sessions overlap. Like we're going to see today, Alan Davison is going to give his uh, car over to Dylan Archer, a Trans Am racer with us at the E-Series. Uh, Ernie Francis Jr. has had a chance to drive Eric Johnson, who races with us in his DTM car. So uh, you never know what's going to happen. And I love these open. I think, honestly, Jonathan, we just witnessed the best vintage race that I've seen in the last 10 years with Formula B. And this open wheel class proves to do the same. Uh, we will kind of go through the list as they come down here. So we got Bakir Begovic, Hans Peter, Charlie Peter, Lewis Cooper Jr., Jerome Meehan, that beautiful Formula 2, Lee Brain, Ben Sinnott in that cool car, Stuart Crow, Bruce Hamilton again. So Bruce jumped out of his Formula B and hopefully made it in time to get into this one. Glenn Belosky, James Johnston, Amir Ali, Phil Stratford, Rob Radman, watch for him to jump up front. Travis Engen again in this car. Kevin Burry, Wesley Cunningham, Randy Acock, James Johnston Jr., John Norton, Brock Evans, Doris Seibert, Gray Fowler, Michael Hummel, Bill Keffart, Edward Copley, Justin Frick, Kurt Bennett, look for him to run up front. John Taphorn, Mark Russell, and Nick Leonard. 32 cars potentially taking the field. Let's see how many are out there. That looks like a soapbox derby. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And if you're wondering how they are eligible for Group 9, well, we've got a combination of Category 1, Formula 5000, Formula 2, Formula 3, Formula Atlantic, Category 2, Formula 1. Um, but, but there's certain years. In Formula 1 case, it's 80 to 86 and 87 to 94. And then all the way through Formula Atlantic also, Formula 5000, Formula Holden even. And Indy Lights cars available for this class. Here we go then. Now the Formula 1 car won it last time as they roar up the hill again. What a sound, beautiful sound. 
Green flag waves and now jostling for position. Jerome Mead up the inside, taking second place, coming from fifth. Ooh, they're all squeezing into turn one. It's going to be tough. And at the back, it's the number 50 of John Taphorn. What a crazy, eclectic group of cars. Look at that know, shot good, right it? there through the S's. Amish, right? Is that the cameraman's yep. name? That is a good shot right there. I Lovely love it. shot. Nice work. And just following through on the number five. That's great. Everybody Fowler. through turn six safely. Gray Fowler's on at number five, a 1997 Bandit Formula car. That's Jerome Mee. We're getting a shot up there, taking the lead or in this group. He's not in first place. And that's Charlie Peter following him behind him in a uh, 2002 Swift 014A. So Jerome Mee jumped up from fifth to second. So we've got a Formula One, but then we've got, looks like Hans Peter is in second. Jerome Mee is in third in a Formula Two car. That's Travis Engen with the Day Glow nose back there. You're gonna hear his name quite a bit. He's with us quite a lot. And I think this is Bruce Hamilton in the lead here. It should be a number eight five car. Now that player's car had a problem uh, yesterday. Ooh, so we have a car off there. Oh, turns, yes. Well. Oh, that's oh, no, the Formula it's the, One. It's the Formula One car at turn 13. Unlucky for some. He was leading the race and he spun it and he's having to wait. Unless he stalled it, I think yeah. he's just waiting. Let's see. Well, he hasn't stalled it because he probably doesn't have a starter and a battery. Oh no! On the well, car. that's. I was about to mention the fact that you know when you get a Formula One car going, you usually need about six mechanics to get it started. He has. I've seen them started at the grid, and he, they have to have a starter motor. So he is. Oh, what if a he's shame. stalled, he's probably there. So well, that, that could might bring, bring out a safety double. car if he can't get it started. They might be able to do a hot pull on him because they've got a lot of time here. But we'll see. So that puts Hans Peter. Should put Hans Peter in the lead, followed by Jerome Mee, Charlie Peter, Ben Sinnott, Stuart Crow, Lee Brain, Bruce Hamilton, James Johnston, Amir Ali, and Rob Radman as the top ten. What a shame. What a shame for our Benetton. But then again, he had some glory yesterday. He won the first race. Uh, but unfortunately, it looks as though he spun and stalled it at 13 here at the Circuit of the Americas. So, different race today, which is all good for us. Got a little bit of a news story for you. Boris said we can never get enough of Boris. He's going to be taking the place of Keith Prochek, uh, who's got a migraine, unfortunately. Uh, so he's going to run TA and TA2. Wow. That's sad for Keith. I know he loves running the TA2 series, but Keith with HP Tuners, thank you so much for giving the seat over as we see a double yellow to hero Boris Said, whose dad raced in Formula One. Yes, he did. Which, interestingly enough, um, I talked to Boris about uh, a few weeks ago, and he uh, wasn't aware because um, he didn't grow up with his father, and he wasn't actually aware that his father was in Formula One until uh, sort of after he started racing. And doesn't that kind of prove that it's in the blood then? Yeah, I think it does. <laughs> so as you can see, the safety car will be out and the tow will be You know, I really want to operation. give my props to the Circuit of the Americas crew. Yeah, they're great. Um, I have a good friend named Bree, who's uh, kind of family members with Terry Osmond that works with us. And Bree helped us out yesterday in the car show, but I want to give a shout out to her. She's a lawyer by trade, but she's out there running the safety vehicles. And I was out there filming a TA2 race uh, two days ago, and they were moving the wall back in. And she, Bree, is hitting the wall like a linebacker to move it back into position. The hustle from the Circuit of the Americas crew is like none we've ever seen at any other track. They can get a car out of there. They hot pull. And, uh, oh, well, this is another car. This another is Lewis Cooper Jr. Yeah, Lewis Cooper Jr. in that 2007 Panos DP01. I hope there was a contact between Lewis and Bakir because that was a fight for first and second going into 12. Yeah, good point. I Maybe they did touch. Damage. I mean, there's no damage that I can see. So look at that crew out there. And by the way, if you're wondering, um, if you want to get involved in motor racing and have the best seat in the house, contact your local SCCA yeah. or your club, and you can be a flag person. You see the 
purple yellows. It's really fun. I highly encourage you to do that. You'll learn a lot about racing. I was about to say, you can learn a lot by marshalling about yeah. how people race, how you go about racing. But it's a family. Yeah. They, they become so close because they're on the radio with each other all day long. They're looking out for each other's safety, and they hang out. And some of the flaggers that we have at our events are some of the coolest people with the greatest stories. Well, and by the way, a huge responsibility. The lives of these men and women out there daring to, to drive, um, you know, these marshals look after them. And there's a lot of respect between both driver and marshal because they know they keep them safe. Their flag marshalling can be the difference between getting in trouble and not. And it's the only way we could be racing. Exactly. Right now, you know, you'll see some of the <coughs> digital boards around that some of the tracks are moving to. But uh, so let's go through. Hans Peter, number 66, is in first place, followed by Jerome Mee. Charlie Peter in third, Ben Sinnott fourth, and that very cool car, and I say that because it's got cool livery on it, meaning the cool cigarettes. Stuart Crow, fifth place. Lee Brain, we just saw him in the last race. Bruce Hamilton, we saw him in the last race in seventh. James Johnston, Amir Ali in ninth. Rob Radman, Travis Engen in 11th, so he's just out of the points, right? Formula One, if he's yep. 11th. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you said. Kevin Burry. Glenn Belosky. Well, he's been well out of the points back in the day. Yeah. Randy Acock, Wesley Cunningham, John Norton, James Johnson Jr. is 17th, Brock Evans, Doris Seibert, Gray Fowler, number 20, Michael Hummel, Robert Pink, Bill Kephart, Edward Copley, Phil Stratford, John Taphorn. Back here is uh, out. Lewis Cooper Jr. is out. Justin Frick did not start. Kurt Bennett did not start. Mark Russell and Nick Leonard did not have five DNFs or DNSs, but we've got a great group right here. Look for Travis Engen to move up, and get up in points with GMT Racing. He's racing four cars here this weekend. I think he has, so just I'll explain this while we're into this. When you win in SVRA, you're winning a medal and a red hat if you make the podium. So you can win a gold, silver, or bronze medal and a red hat, the very coveted red hat. I've never been on the podium with SVRA, so I am not allowed to wear a red hat. It's a very coveted thing. Travis Engen could probably fill up a hotel room. Those red, red hats, hats aren't as popular as they were yesterday. <laughs> the Make America Race Again hat? <laughs> that's the one. Yeah. So, uh, so that's what they're racing for. It's just pride and the fun of racing. You know, this is probably the purest motorsport because most of these drivers, in fact, almost all of the drivers have no or very little sponsorship. They're spending money to race with us to just have the time of their life. And it's our job as SVR staff to be the concierge and make sure that they're running safely and they've got good competition. But our job is to make sure that they're living the dream. Well, we're about to live the dream with them because the safety car is coming off this lap and we are going racing again. We have still some three, almost four minutes on the board, so we should get a two-lap sprint here for our Group 9 action. As you can see, they're weaving snake-like through the stadium section, uh, being led by the safety car, but we're expecting that safety car to pull off and let us go racing again and we'll have like i said probably a one or two lap sprint here we go then group nine we've had some good racing already matt brabham won the first race or the previous race, I should say. And the calm before the storm here. I and mean, it's still very misty out there. It's just gone 9 o'clock in the morning here, and uh, the sun refusing to come out just yet. A little shy this morning. We saw the sun go down last night. Didn't want to miss it. So we have... 32 cars that signed up and 11 different manufacturers. That's great. You don't see that in modern racing. How cool is that? Looks Ooh, like he's, he's to got a jump. Lead. Nicely done by Hans Peter. He got a very good jump there. And away they go. Up the hill they come. Ben Sinnott on the inside right there at fourth place, trying to take it. Good strong field, isn't it? Look at them all spreading out so oh, oh, very quickly indeed. Oh, oh, oh. 
tight racing. Yeah, those are side by deep. side through down the hill at two. That's not easy to do. That's a fourth gear corner turn two when you're up to speed. That's a great shot. Look at that. Yeah. Weaving side to side in front of us and using all the mechanical grip. And now with the tyres up to temperature, hopefully, nobody swerving too far wide. And everybody smoothly through the S's. Down towards 11 come the leaders. Chance for an overtake, but no one quite close enough. Now you tuck in and get the slipstream. Yep. Lead Jerome Mead, Charlie Peter, Ben Sinnott, and Stuart Crow as our top five as they go down the back straight. How hard do you think these cars are to drive? I would have said you've got to know what you're doing. Uh, this is not this is not for the faint-hearted, is it? It isn't. And uh, also the G-forces, the third yeah. experience here, especially on this turn. Look at that Ben Sinnott side by side right there with Charlie Peter. Ben Sinnott just takes third place from Charlie Peter, but I would say extremely hard to drive. You know, I don't know that personally because I, I'm not good enough to try one of these cars. Yeah. Well, I know that in modern IndyCar and Formula One, some of the corners and some of the G-force they uh, go under, you and I as mere mortals would pass out and our neck muscles just wouldn't be able to cope with it. Now, yeah. of course, these guys are not going quite as fast as that, but even so, there's a lot of G-force acting on them right now. Yeah, there sure is. We have a driver, he's probably about 24 years old, named uh, James French, that races a Formula One car with us, with his dad. And his neck muscles are amazing. Yeah. Because he's well, you need him. with us in LMP3, too, also. Here we go. Ben Sennett again. Trying to take it from Charlie. Sennett look on the inside line. Charlie, uh, Charlie Peter trying to defend, but... Uh, we're on final lap. Just gets through. We are on the final lap now, so this race is going all the way with these four cars. At the moment, Hans Peter leads. He's got a gap of some five seconds over Jerome Mee. There it is. You can see it for yourself there. As he popped through shot there. This is the battle we're watching, though. Really good three-way battle between these three. That's Lee Brain in the red car. This is Bruce Hamilton here. Coming up, he was in the last race with us, and he partners with Lynn St. James quite a bit in that car. Yeah, Sagan. when they're close up like that, you really see how well they grip to the to the. Here we go. Charlie Peter might try to make a move on Jerome Mee with Ben Sinnott as they come into the DRS zone. Ooh, ben nice Sinnott ball from Lee. Might have been a little bit of a brake check. <laughs> yeah. Final lap here in Group Nine. SVR a national championships here at the Circuit of the Americas. The bumper field, the crowd are here as well. Delighted to be bringing it to you wherever you're tuning in around the world. So what happened there is oh, that... Oh! Big lock up and he's missed his breaking point, but just about back, gets it all together again. Well done, Charlie. That's Lee Brain right behind Ben Sennett. Ben Sennett kind of checked up there at 11 and Lee had to hit his brakes and that put Stuart Crow right in the back of Lee and I hope Stuart Crow's front wing is okay. Into 15 they go, still looking for a better result. Fighting all the way, this is great racing in these priceless cars. And Hans Peter heading towards the checkered flag. Just two corners to go for the leader. Charlie Peters. And here he comes out of turn 20 to take the checkered flag. Hans Peter wins ahead of Jerome Mee, this who will right be here coming around be that good. corner. Here he comes, and look right how here. close it is. Oh! Charlie Never Peter turn. takes it. Charlie Peter! Nicely done. At the last corner. A little over under action. We've had some good open wheel races so far, Excellent. Down. Excellent stuff. So Hans Peter takes the victory, no doubt about that, but Charlie Peter, right at the get-go, at the last second there, comes on the inside, gets great drive out of 20, not easy to do, and beats Jerome Mee to the line, who takes third place. Benson, a good battle all the way through in fourth place. Lee Baharin just lost out there at turn 11 uh, in the draft there, and uh, he will finish fifth ahead of Stuart Crow in sixth and Bruce Hamilton in seventh. So if the camera guys can hear us, let's get a good shot of that red-looking Ferrari Formula 2 of Jerome Mee. It's a really pretty car. As they're coming up to congratulate each other after a great race, waving yeah. at the fans. We've got a lot of fans here. You can come out to the Austin Speed Tour. You can buy tickets at speedtour.net or meet us here at the gate. Great to be back and racing with fans.
This is a really cool sight. You can see the kids right there in the campground waving to the drivers. Just a lot of fun in vintage racing. Clickety click, 66. Hans Peter coming down the back straight, waving to the crowd. So we will see him with a gold bell helmet. Well, I, hope one of the, I want to see one of those. National champion. I haven't seen him yet this year. No. But it's really neat. You see some really gruff men who are very <laughs> emotional. Getting weak at the knees, huh? Trophy. And women. Yeah. And, and a lot of times it's a woman driver or it's the wife. Well, here are the results then. Hans Peter takes the Swift. Oh. 1-6 or 0-16 to victory. Charlie Peter takes second place, a really, really hard fourth, six second place. Jerome Mee takes third, Benson at fourth. Lee Brahin takes fifth place, Stuart Crow six. Bruce Hamilton seventh. Amir Ali takes eighth position in the Master Pro. And James Johnson ninth. And Rob Radman takes the top ten. So that concludes our Group 9 coverage. More racing to come from the SVRA Sports Car Vintage Racing Association. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back from Kota after this.